and welcome to the Habits and Home Show. I'm your host, Lisa Lazat, and I help busy moms bring order to their homes by downsizing and decluttering and ditching old habits in exchange for systems that bring peace and more enjoyment to their lives. If you're a mom trying to show the love of Jesus to your family, but the clutter in your home keeps you overwhelmed and frustrated, you have come to the right place. On this podcast, you will hear easy step-by-step tips to declutter and create systems so you can keep your home organized and finally walk in the peace God has promised you. Need some accountability? I've got you covered there too. Join the Accountability Club, a community of like-minded mamas decluttering and systemizing our homes together. Are you ready, friend? Let's get started. Hey friends, and welcome to the show. We are wrapping up summer and we have two more episodes in our summer series in which I have been talking to my current students and my former private coaching clients about their experience decluttering and organizing their house. And on today's episode, I am speaking with a former client, and a current student. She is someone who has come back around to me to get ongoing coaching while we are systemizing her home. And today we are talking about when she went through my accountability club in the month of, I think it was January. I'm pretty sure it was January where we decluttered and organized the photos on her phone. Now I had a lot of students inside the club who had thousands and 10,000s of photos and we have worked through them and gotten them organized and I gave them a step-by-step system and Rochelle has applied that system to her own phone and her own photos and she's going to share her experience today as well as give you the steps that I gave her and walked her through. So get out a piece of paper, take some notes, but then I also want you to keep in mind that I have something up my sleeves for you. I am slowly putting my course or this course for photo organization on the shop and so i'm slowly working out y'all i have a normal life i have family to take care of and a home to take care of so I, I'm, a, I'm a one woman show so stay tuned if you're not on my email list click the link below to grab my freebie get on my email list because i will be having a big announcement in the next couple of weeks because i am revamping my shop and i'm putting all the systems that i have taken my students through for the past year and putting them on my shop for you to be able to purchase in case you missed it. So I hope you're excited for that. Like I said, click the link below and get on my email list, download my free reset checklist, and you'll have all the details when that shop is ready for you to check out. Okay, we're going to dive into today's conversation. Hi, Rochelle, and welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to talk with you today about digital photos and getting those organized. So I just want to say welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much. It's uh, really exciting to be here. You joined the Accountability Club after coaching with me for 12 sessions, one-on-one. And I love that you thought, okay, I'm going to join the Accountability Club just to kind of solidify the organization that we did together and just get that ongoing support and accountability. And one challenge that you participated in is the, the one that I want to focus on for today's topic, which was decluttering and organizing our digital photos, specifically the ones that we keep on our phone, because it's really easy for us to take photos on our phone nowadays. So let me just ask you, how did, when you, when you, thought about the task of decluttering the photos on your phone and getting them organized when you thought about doing that on your own before we ever got started with this challenge what were the feelings that came up what were the pain points that you had so I found that as a person that is like not afraid but paper is like my nemesis you know and so I always thought oh digital files are better And the thing is, is digital files can be just as bad because 
we, what I had inadvertently done through this, oh, I'll just take a picture of this artwork and then I'll have it forever. And what ends up happening is you take maybe 50 to 100, sometimes more photos a month, but then how many months are there, you know, and you keep going and you're, you're accumulating like a thousand photos every single year. And so it kind of became my new pile, yeah. right? Like it became the new pile. It was on my phone. And um, shortly after, so I was, I was avoiding it. I didn't, I didn't want to do it. Like I would, I would play a game or like if I had a few minutes to myself and I was like, okay, I'm going to pour a cup of tea and I'm going to work on my phone, like do something on my phone. And I, I really should go through these photos. And then I start looking and I'm just, you know, then you're faced all at once with 5,000 decisions that you didn't make before. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's, it's very overwhelming. Yeah. And, and you said a thousand per year. Now that is a small scale <laughs> compared to what some people have. I know yeah. our listeners are going to be like, girlfriend, if you have a thousand, you're doing good. I'd rather be in your boat because, you know, especially moms with like little children and babies, we tend to take a lot more when they're little. Sure. When they're older, they get kind of like the attitudes and they're not as cute anymore, um, but we still take their photos. But when, you know, there's moms out there that have like tens of thousands every sure. year, it feels very overwhelming and very daunting. And so when we got into this challenge, you know, each month I, I kind of break down the, the topic and the approach and create a system for how we're going to approach that area. And I love that you said, even though it's digital, it's still a pile, it's still an unavoided or a, a decision that you have procrastinated and, you know, it becomes clutter, just like our physical clutter. And let me just say, that yes, there might be like systems out there that are apps that will automatically, you know, you know, get rid of multiple photos and things like that. It is a lot of people don't take that route because they don't trust the app to do that and to make the decision. It's the same when you bring an organizer into your house and you don't just hand over your house and say, okay, get rid of all this stuff for me. <laughs> you want to touch it. You want to make the decision on your own. And that, like you said, it's 5,000 decisions and it's very overwhelming. So it's really important that we approach a decluttering task or an organizing task with some sort of system to reduce that overwhelm. So let me, I'm going to quiz you a little bit, Rochelle, and I don't want you to feel like you have to get it perfect because my goal is for you not to depend on me for this education forever. I want you to feel empowered. I want you to feel educated. I want you to apply and, and keep these systems and these steps forever. So I'm going to quiz you just a little bit and it's okay. I'm going to guide you in case you forget, but do you remember, and it doesn't have to be exact, but do you remember the system that I laid out for you or the steps that I laid out for you to simply approach decluttering the photos on your phone? So just imagine, okay, you're picking up your phone. What was like the first initial step that I had you do? Well, the first thing was to pick the year that I was working on. So when we first started, it was 2023 being the most recent because everything was fresh and I knew what memories I wanted to hang on to. So first I would pick the year. And then actually, as before I would start the year, I would write down the months and then count, like get those down. So the total for 2023, and then, you know, January through December, and then the total for each month. Yes, yes. For the photos. You, you got yeah. an A plus on that. Good job. <laughs> I always give y'all, I always want to have a workspace. It's so important when you are tackling a space, whether physically or digitally, to have a clear workspace to manage your thoughts and manage your mind and how you're thinking through how you're going to approach that task. So what Rochelle said, let me just summarize that. What Rochelle said was first, she chose a year, which was 2023. 
And she wrote down beside, you can do this on paper or you can do this on a document on your computer, but you just simply write the year at the top of the paper and then put the total number of photos for that year. Just simply write it, just simply get a, a you know, clarity over that. Then she listed the months of the year, January through December. And then in each of those months, she broke it down what number was in each of those months. And then I'm going to let you take over. And do you remember what we did after that? I recall setting a goal for how many that I wanted. And depending on the months, like I know we had talked in the group about 25-ish being like kind of that magic number. And there were some months that were really slow, like in winter when we didn't do anything and I might have 15. And then there are some months where we had a vacation, family vacation or something. So we might have like 40 or 50. There's no right or wrong, but just looking through them, like looking at the, the, you know, zoomed out view, what's reasonable for that particular month. Yeah. So for in most cases, I would shoot for 25 and then I would get into it and say, oh no, this is 40 (laughs) or, you know, or whatever. So that was my next step. You are fall, you are like a plus student right now. It's making me so excited because even some of these steps uh, you're make you're making me remember <laughs> what they were and I'm like, "Wow, this you've got it, girl." Okay, so first you write them down, the second was to make a goal. And and like I said, you know, I told Rochelle, um I said, "Let's let's shoot for 20. Let's shoot for 20 mm-hmm. to 30 or 20 25 to 30 photos." per month that will give us, I'm not going to, what's the math on that? Like 250 for Mm -hmm. a year, right? Estimated. And, you know, we're shooting for that. And so when you're, when you're looking at, you know, in like Rochelle said, there's lots of grace. And that's something that Rochelle had to learn too, because that was a question that came up in the, um, in the club. I remember that you were kind of like, but I, it, it, it's really hard for me to get down to the, that 25. And that's where I had to like remind, and that's where community comes in, reminding us that, you know, there's a lot of grace with this. Just like when an organizer comes in, hopefully you have a good organizer and they don't make you get rid of the things that she thinks you need to get rid of, but she just pushes you a little bit, just challenges you, which I did with you um, during those 12 weeks we were together you know, it wasn't pain. It, it was probably a little, not necessarily painful, but it was challenging. And when we work through that challenge, we grow as a person. So, all right. So we, now we have our goal per month that we set up. What was the next step? So then, and I might be wrong because I feel like there's more, but I don't think so. Then I would just start going through one at a time. And the question that I would ask myself is, and this is what I actually like about the digital files, that in a way it's easier. Like, yes, it can multiply faster because I'm not constrained by space, physical space, but there it's easier to get things back if you make a mistake. Um, and so like, for example, on an iPhone, and I'm sure that Google Gallery has something similar, but on an iPhone, it's like 30 days. When I delete it, it's there for 30 days. And um, my photo backup, which I know we haven't talked about yet, but my backup is um, Amazon. So we we have Prime and it's free unlimited backup. So that's what we've decided to use as a family because then my husband, that's what he does. And then we can share and things like that. But that... Um, stores them for 90 days. So there's like no real way to lose these photos. So it's a lot safer. And so that was a big comfort for me. Um, But also I can go like 99% by how I feel about the photo. And I can't always do that in my house because it's stuff that takes up room and I have those physical constraints Mm -hmm. and I don't have those digitally. So I can look at this photo and if it warms my heart or if it makes me smile or if, whoa, that's what I want on the Christmas card. You know, like those are the criteria. It doesn't have to be, do I love it? Do I use it? Do I need it? It doesn't have to be so rigid. 
Yes. And that's why I was actually like, once I finally got going, it was like, oh, I have five minutes. I'm going to do a month. It it got like, um, because it was so empowering, like yeah. to be able to realize that it was very difficult to make a mistake yeah. and to do something that I couldn't undo and to go completely by how that memory made me feel. Yes. Yes. So I love that. Oh, I love all of that. And no, there were no other steps other than getting your, your, your workspace set up and then just getting in there and decluttering. I mean, that is literally the next step. Even when you're doing physical decluttering is you set up your workspace, then you get in there and you actually start working through. And there's, like I said, there's no easy way there. There are like, if you're going to trust an app to sort it and do it, you can do that. Or if you want to hire somebody to make decisions, but typically we don't. And that's why we, we don't tackle this task because we know that we have to go, we have to use our own eyes and go through each and every photo. And I love that you set up your own criteria for that. And so the next step after that, okay, so when you went through it, like you said, you went month by month, or I recommended that y'all would go month by month at a, ch at a time, like little chunks, breaking it down. And so when you, and then in your notes app or in your piece of paper, you simply check off when that month is complete. And so that you have a tracking of how far you are, have come and how far, how much left you have you have left to do because in the digital space, we don't really see it as easy as we do in our physical space. Like we can see we're working around a room and we have half the room left to go in our digital space. It just becomes very blurred and overwhelming. But when we write it down and list it like that, it becomes very concrete. Okay. So and that's your accountability too. Yeah. Because I can, I can zoom in or zoom out. I can see however many I want to see. I can see 10 and delude myself into thinking I'm <laughs> yeah. almost done. Yeah, but that's... if I have that written down, yeah. that's another layer of accountability. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's what we need when we're parenting ourselves and we're making ourselves do these tasks. That's what we need is that account, some sort of accountability, whether it's external or internal, or just simply writing it on a piece of paper. Okay. So we went through, um, we decluttered. So we, we set up our workspace, we sort our, our, our photos, then you kind of touched on this a little bit, our long-term storage, okay? So we don't really want to keep them on our phone forever because that's not resetting our phone for the year to come. So what, what was the next step as far as like creating this place of this holding place for long-term long storage? So after that, I, I listened to some of your recommendations and I sort of poked around and tried to figure out the best place to store them. And then I realized that Amazon would actually be, and this is not a plug, but That's um, okay. I, my husband had said, you know, I said, what do you think about photo storage? Cause he's a um, security guy. And I said, where do you feel comfortable? And he said, well, Amazon is included with Prime and it's unlimited and that's what I use. And then I can share with you and you can share with me and it's really convenient. So that's when I decided to do that. And actually, it's funny that you ask this because I sort of had a forced migration because my phone uh, became inoperable. So um, it would spontaneously reboot. So we had to upload all those photos. And I mean, it took a really long time because I was only through um, 2021, I think. So I still had quite a lot. Yeah. And I hadn't gotten to videos yet. So, so my poor husband was sitting there for probably about three days trying to <laughs> get it to, to back up all these things. But Ideally, you don't have to do it that way. So that would be the next step is to, you know, get your backup system and start as you're able um, yeah. uploading those and then and then remove them from the phone, yeah. which is usually an option in whatever, you know, whatever app you're using. Yes. Now, did you, I, I, in the recommendation that I made, I recommended that we did an external hard drive as well as an online backup. Did you choose just one, one um, storage place or did you end up doing both of those? 
At this point, I have just the online, um, but we have discussed, we do have for previous years, we do have um, an external hard drive. So we do have some of them. We're just not finished. Right. Right. So yes. we have like when the kids were little and so, some of those kinds of things yeah. are duplicated. Yeah. And, and, yep. and like I say, with any system, just like with our paper system that we went over in our, our paper clutter challenge, you're going to refine this system yearly as you come back around to it. And even like I've been, you know, using my paper system for a, several years and this year I refined it more and I was able to shrink our papers, our important papers down by half, even as a, the minimalist that I am. So just know that another year of personal development d development and growth, you're going to refine your system even more. So let's not shoot for perfection. Let's shoot for just making progress. Okay. So so we took, I took you through the whole, um, and, and let me just say, as far as like the recommendations of where to store, I love that you, uh, found that solution in Amazon prime. I did not know that you could store photos with Amazon. That is great. In my recommendation, I have used Shutterfly for years, probably, um, we've been married for 18 years. I have used it for 18 years and I simply just created an account and I create, um, you know, uh, folders by year. And that's where I store those, the, my, on my online storage system, uh, is where I store my photos. Now you can do this like at Walgreens, you know, there's lots of different websites out there that'll allow you to create a photo account. That's basically anywhere you can order photos. They will allow you to store photos in that account with, for, completely for free. <laughs> so I do recommend having a place for long-term storage of your photos as a backup. Okay. So what do you find that it was easier once we kind of like broke this down into steps? Was it easier and less daunting to tackle your photos? Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, there was you know, sometimes I would just fly through a month and I'm like, oh, wait, I, I have 10 more minutes. And I would just, it, it became, um, it was just super motivating. Like yeah. I just wanted to keep going. Like it was, it was the new thing, yeah. <laughs> you know, that yeah. I was really excited about because, um, it's easier, like in, in some ways it's easier. It, it felt like to keep that momentum going. And there weren't as many physical factors right. like, you know, if I'm decluttering my kitchen and, you know, and I know you're going to relate to this, like I homeschool three teenagers. So it's like my kitchen's never empty. There's always somebody doing something with food in my kitchen. So it's, it's very difficult. This was just me and my phone. Me and my yeah. phone and a cup of tea <clears throat> and we just got it done, you know? Yeah. And so that was its own motivation is being able to accomplish things quickly. But I think I definitely agree that breaking it down by year and then again by month, like how small of a chunk can, can we go? Yeah. And, um, that just seemed, it, it made it much, much less daunting yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like I, I, I say this over again, decluttering is a muscle that we are learning to work and we're getting stronger at it. And so just the, like the thought, first of all, the thought of getting started kind of holds us back, but then we work that muscle a little bit and we are like, Oh, this is kind of fun and it almost becomes addicting. And it's like a chat, you like challenge yourself. And, and it, it, it can be the same with physical clutter as well. Like, Oh, how, how much can I, how much more can I get rid of and like actually like thrive and live? And it's almost like challenging yourself. I remember um, my, my friend sharing with me a story of the, how this man lived out of a backpack for a year. And I thought, okay, I don't have to go that extreme, <laughs> but I'm, I thought if he can live and survive and thrive with anything that's like on his back, I'm like, y'all, I can live with a lot less. <laughs> and so it just became more like very motivating and very challenging. Now I don't, I don't think like, just like if you go to on a mission trip and you see starving children, you don't need to just come back and say, okay, I'm only going to eat what they eat, which is a bowl of rice. You don't have to take it to the extreme. 
So you don't have to be super minimalist, but I, I do like what you're saying as far as, Oh, it became really challenging. And I pushed myself a little bit further. How much more can I do in this 10 minutes? I love all of that. Okay. So what has it meant to you, Rochelle? What has it meant to you to finally tackle those photos, get them organized and get them in a place that feels good for you? A lot is the short answer. Um, it's it's been very meaningful. And I think um, you know, like you said, my kids are in three teenagers and we're in this phase where some days are a fight to get connection. And one of the things that they love a lot that they really get excited about is family photos. And I know you touched on this before with the yearly books, how they mm -hmm. just love to go through it. But I, I find them in wedding albums and baby pictures and, you know, like, oh, can I, do you remember that time that I won that uh, science Olympiad thing? Can you show me those? And now it's, it's so much easier to find the things and to sh go right to that thing, or at least go right to that year Mm -hmm. and flip through them because there's not random photos of shopping lists or, you know, a bug that we found that they wanted yeah. to know what it was, or, you know, there's not all these randoms that pile up screenshots yeah. of stuff that I'm never going to use again. Um, so it's, it's actually fun and I actually enjoy my phone. Um, it doesn't feel as, overwhelming to yeah. to go in there and now I've just sort of started this habit where every 30 to 60 days I just go through the previous months um and just awesome. like oh that's an old shopping list that's an old screenshot I'm never going to use that again but now I have space and I have healthy habits around oh this was a very motivational meme that I downloaded so I'm going to say that because that's got a bible verse that I really like and I've been using it lately and I feel okay because I only have 22 other photos for that month yeah I don't yeah. have you know 5,000 or whatever I, I love that you mentioned um your system or your your habit now and your routine for going through that was actually my last question for you. So uh, obviously you have a plan in place to go through your photos often, you know, every 30 to 60 days, I have it on my monthly reset to, to do, go through my photos at the end of the month. Does it always happen? No, it doesn't always happen, but I have that reset in place and that plan in place that I can always lean back on it. And it can always Always like pop up as a reminder, hey, declutter your photos. Because if not, then you're waiting until the end of the year or the beginning of the following year and you're having to go through a thousand photos again. So breaking this down, like I said, like I teach y'all to do, you know, resetting your your house every night and your kitchen every night or even your bedroom every night, it 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 doesn't pile up to where it becomes an insurmountable task for you to be able to, to, to tackle later on. Um, so doing these daily habits and these daily resets or for our photos, our weekly or our monthly reset is going to be really helpful into, um, managing it on a regular basis so that it doesn't pile up. So, um, thank you so much, Rochelle, for, for sharing your testimony with us and as well as your story and journey through this. And I, I hope that people find it encouraging and you live in a very diverse, um, household with lots of different, um, you know, uh, what would you say? Um, what, what, what would we say? Neuro neurodiverse. Neurodiverse. Yeah. Yes. We, we like to say we have all the things that end in D. <laughs> That's <laughs> all that. Somebody's it. got it. Yeah. I love it. So even in a very not neurodiverse family uh, situation, you were able to like break this task down. And I love the testimonial that you have from it. So thank you so much for sharing your story. And we are going to hop into a quick coaching session together. So I hope y'all found this encouraging. And thank you, Rochelle, for being on. Thank you. Hey friend, before you go, I wanted to tell you more about the Accountability Club. Each month, we'll tackle a new space in our homes and work together to declutter and set up systems so we can easily maintain order without getting overwhelmed. 
you'll get a new decluttering tutorial each month the coaching and accountability you need to actually follow through, and encouragement without judgment from other Christian moms in a safe environment. And guess what? The entire club is off of social media, so you don't have to worry about distractions the world may throw at you. Sweet friend, if you're feeling stuck in your decluttering journey, this is the place for you. Click the link below to try out the Accountability Club and start decluttering today.